Hey, what's up, nerd? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we're going to talk about starting a Caradron Overlord's Army. Now, these guys are really popular for their aesthetics, and they're also a really popular competitive play choice right now. They are very powerful on the tournament scene. Uh, one of the interesting things about them, though, is that they're very difficult to play and they're not really that friendly to new players. So I wanted to kind of put a guide out there for at least uh, beginner army composition, getting some general ideas as to where to begin with this for newer players. Because it's one of the more unique armies in Age of Sigmar, and your army is going to look a lot different than your typical Age of Sigmar army. So let's get it kicked off here. So we have some weird battle line options. Um, your Arcanaut Company are always going to be battle line. Arcanaut Frigates can be battle line if you are Barak Zilfin. Endron Riggers and Sky Wardens are battle line if your general is an Endron Master with Dirigible Suit. Gun haulers are battle line if you're Barak Urbaz, and Thunderers are battle line if you are in Barak Nar. Now, typically, what you actually see in most lists for battle line is some amount of Arcanaut Company and some amount of Endrin Riggers with your Endrin Master and Dirigible Suit uh, as your general. That is the most common build that I've seen, and really the the direction that I would generally advise people into. Um, you know, frigates, uh, as we're going to talk about later, are a less common choice for your sky ships. Uh, gun haulers, I mean, I'm not sure I would want to fill up at a line slot with a gun hauler. And thunderers, well, that's just not a popular choice because Barak Nar is not really a popular choice. Otherwise, that would probably be a good one. As far as heroes go, um, the Endron Master and Dirigible Suit is like a must-have for this army. He is really strong. He makes your Endron Riggers and Sky Wardens battle line. Um, he can dish out a lot of damage. He's fairly resilient. He's fast. He can hitch a ride on ships. He's really good in general. Now, your Aether Chemist is one of your cheaper heroes. He can hand out uh, reroll wounds of one buff, which is fairly uncommon. Uh, this army doesn't buff wound rolls very much. You tend to see a lot of reroll ones to hit. Um, and also, he can take spell in a bottle for an artifact, which lets you uh, take an endless spell and cast it for free uh, once per game. So, that is a very popular choice. It's very powerful and gives you uh, quite a bit of options. There's a lot of good spells that you could possibly take, although there's a few that are more popular than others, and that's kind of a subject for another video. Your Etheric Navigator is also a strong choice. Um, he has some good artifacts he can take. He has the ability to unbind and dispel in the spells, and he has the ability to either debuff enemy movement um, on flying units, or he can buff your own guys with giving them reroll hit and I'm sorry, rerolling run and charge rolls. So overall, these are your three mainstays. There's certainly other options, and a lot of the hero options in this book are fine. Um, you know, I would say notably an Arcanaut Admiral is probably pretty good. Um, a regular Endron Master on foot is also um, a fairly common choice because he's cheap uh, and he can heal ships. So it, there's some choices here, um, but these three are really the, the big ones that you see most often in lists. As far as Sky Vessels go... This is one of the few times that I'm going to advise to new players to go out and buy the most expensive model in the model range of an army. 
the Arcanaut Ironclad is like the backbone of a 2,000 point list. It's big, it's powerful, it can carry up to 25, and it can carry up to 15 without being overburdened, so that is really powerful. And it has a selection of six Endrin works, and a lot of them are really good, including one that lets you carry up to the full 25 without being overburdened, which is also a very popular choice. You can load this guy to the gills with uh, all of the troops inside the garrison that you want and not have any penalty for it. Um, your Arcanaut frigates, they're not that commonly used. There's a few niche builds that run them, and maybe if you're playing 1,000-point games, you might see these guys in that level uh, just for uh, points issues. They're kind of an awkward middle ground between gun haulers and ironclads. They can hold up to 15 troops and uh, only 10 without being overburdened and losing their uh, additional movement buffs. Um, their firepower is okay. It's not as good as the Ironclad, obviously, and it scales roughly with the Ironclad, like in terms of what its average output is, but it's a little bit more swingy than the Ironclad. Then your Gun Hauler is a pretty cheap option that can always be threatening objectives with the Fly High ability. Um, it can tow your uh, guys in dirigible suits around, your Endrin Master, your Sky Wardens, your Endrin Riggers. Um, and there's also an Endrin work for the Gun Haulers that lets you carry up to five guys inside of it as well. So it's another little mobile artillery piece if you choose to play it that way. Now, as far as army composition, um, typically what I would say is you want an ironclad, you want, you know, zero to two gun haulers. Commonly, you're going to see one gun hauler. Some amount of Arcanaut company, some number of engine riggers, um, often in groups of six, so they can be towed with your boats. Um, and if not, then you take them in 12 so that they get ether gold. Um, Grunstock Thunderers are great for putting inside an ironclad and then a selection of heroes. That is really sort of your basic build. Now, I want to point out that, um, and I've done a video on this in the past, that Endron Riggers are almost strictly better than Sky Wardens. Um, I'm not going to get into it here as to why that is but uh you can check out my other videos and you should find something on uh the different power levels of shooting units in caradron overlords so what should you actually buy to get started so i'd recommend to start collecting boxes that'll give you uh from each box a gun hauler a unit of three Sky Riggers, so your Endrin Rigger um, and Sky Wardens, uh, an Endrin Master, and five Thunderers. So getting two of those, obviously you get double all of that. Uh, I would recommend two boxes of Sky Riggers, so that gets you up to a total of 12 Endrin Riggers. Um, an Arcanaut Ironclad three boxes of 10 Arcanaut Company, so that fills out having minimum battle line, um, no matter what else you're taking. Um, grab an Etheric Navigator, an Aether Chemist, an Endron Master and Dirigible Suit. And uh, also, just as a note, if you're looking at um, going more heavy on Thunderers, um, replace those Sky Rigger boxes with the Warcry Warband boxes. So, for not much of a greater investment, you'll get a unit of three Sky Riggers and a unit of five Thunderers in that box. So, without too much modification, you can get a whole lot more without even spending that much more money. So, this will give you uh, a collection that's a bit over 2,000 points, so you'll have a little bit of flexibility. You should be able to fill out... Um, 
some battalions with this and uh, be able to build some solid lists. Is this going to give you tournament winning lists, you know, for like GTs? Probably not, but this is, you know, a good start. This gets you a basic army that will function and you'll be able to hold objectives, tear down your opponent pretty effectively and actually have a good time with this army instead of just, you know, struggling and trying to figure out what to do with everything. So that's about it on starting out with Caradron Overlords. Hopefully this was helpful to people. Feel free to drop more questions down in the comments. This is an army that I own, so um, I have researched it quite a bit. I've done a number of other videos on it. So, um, yeah, definitely check those out. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I should probably mention that earlier on in the video, but hey, we'll just throw it at the end. Um, you can always support us on Patreon if you'd like to help out the channel further. And we also have links to our social media in the description of the video. Uh, you can find our Facebook group and find me on Twitter. So that is all for now, guys. I will talk to you all later.